Hey, Mike Phillips here, and I'm gonna do a second video now. This is the second tool. We're gonna unbox it, show you everything you get inside the box. I'm gonna take this tool over here, and I'm gonna pick up where I left off after I was done using the new 24 volt cordless rotary. There's a video for that also on the Dr. Beasley's YouTube channel, and there's an article for it on the Dr. Beasley's blog. So uh, very, very thorough, in-depth information about all these new tools. Anyway, so this is, the, um, this is the new one. Before we start opening this up, something I just wanna share is I, I have already been testing, this is the eight millimeter, the, the new, latest version of the CB. CB stands for cordless, the letter C, cordless beast. And of course the cordless beast is the cordless version of the original beast, the XC3401 BRG. But this is the nickname, this official nickname, it's called the uh, C beast. Uh, but I've been testing the prototype, haven't had any problems with it at all. And then I just thought I'd share, here's my original one. So this was given to me by Bob Eichelberg when it was um, debuted at SEMA uh, a few years ago. And it's still working, it still works great today. So, uh, so hoping, hoping that the, the new version is gonna be just as good as the reliable old version. So let's go ahead and let's open this, see what's inside here. From the past video, I know exactly where to go now to cut the tape, get this thing opened up. <clears throat> like this. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So kind of like the rotary, you come up, it comes with a flex, a zippered, a carry bag, very sturdy, by the way. I don't think you have any problems storing your tool carrying around this thing. Uh, here's the owner's manual here for the tool. Here's the owner's manual for the battery charger. If you got any questions about it, they're all covered inside of there. Uh, again, two batteries, just like what came with the Flex rotary, the 24 volt rotary, there are two five volt, five amp batteries that come with all these tools. So let me get those out here. And these just come with kind of a, a minimal charge. So as soon as you get this tool, you wanna to get the charger out, go ahead and charge them all the way up to full, and then you can start using the tool. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Oh, we got the tool itself, okay. Okay, let me uh, fold this up and get it out of the way here. Okay, so here we go. So here is the tool. And uh, kind of like I shared in the other video on the rotary polisher, pretty much the tool frame or the chassis, the body here is pretty much the same. Um, it's got a nice rubber overmold um, on the head of the tool, which gives you good grip, you know, so you don't tire your hand out trying to grip it, say if it was smooth or hard. Um, right here in the center, you probably can't see from back there, but there's the letter eight, which is indented or embossed into this rubber overmold. So you can quickly identify and say, that's my eight millimeter gear driven orbital versus any other tool like the 15 millimeter. Uh, it has the really nice uh, amb ambidextrous speed dial. It also has very large printout letters here, so you can easily see what speed you're on. Uh, of course, it's got a nice big slow start trigger, trigger lock. I always teach people to lock your triggers in just so it saves you from kind of having to hold it in the whole time you're buffing out a car. This thing comes uh, from the factory with what looks like a six inch backing plate. I think the originals, uh, when they released these tools, they came with a five inch and I never understood why they brought the five inch because here, follow my thoughts. Um, this tool has a lot of power, it's gear driven. There'll be zero pad stalling. They put a five inch backing plate on it, which makes you turn and turn a five and a half inch pad, but you could get the optional six inch backing plate and now you can turn a six and a half inch pad. So you can uh, take advantage of all the power it has. With a smaller pad, you got a smaller footprint, you're not taking advantage of all that power. So ever since these things have been invented, I've been um, taking the five inch, pretty much just tossing it put the six inch on, that way I can turn and turn larger pads, knock out my work faster. But it looks like this already came with the um, smaller backing plate. I thought, let me just check real quick here, maybe I missed it in here, because I thought this also, they were gonna ship this with the smaller backing plate for those that may like a smaller backing plate. Oh, charger, forgot to get that out. And what else is hidden in here? Well, if it comes with one, I'm not seeing it, but I thought it did. I thought they told me originally that it was going to come with the optional five inch backing plate. 
But regardless, you really don't need it. You know, this thing has a lot of power. You can go ahead and take advantage of the power by turning and turning uh, larger pads. And um, there we go. Okay, so back to the tool itself. Now, when you get this thing brand new, it does come with these two five amp batteries. And there's a little button on the very back of these things. You can press that and then there's the LED readout here, these green bars, there's four of these, and it'll tell you how much charge. This has one bar. So like I said, they ship these with just enough charge so they're not shipping a dead battery. And uh, the tool will operate. However, you do wanna go ahead and fully charge these things up before you start using the tool. Uh, besides that, it has a nice, easy to read display, which shows you what the speed settings are for uh, the different OPMs and RPMs right here. So you can quickly tell. For the most part, I'm on six. If it went to seven, I'd put it on seven. I never really tend to use this type of tool very slow. Uh, but that's everything that comes with it. You got the charger, you got two batteries, the sturdy uh, carry-all case here. And um, that's pretty much all you need to get started. Of course, you need your own buffing pads and your own products. So just to recap where we left off, I had originally started out and I took and compounded, I actually sanded uh, the hood with 2000 grit followed by 2500 grit because the, the, the holograms were just so deep. Instead of grinding with the rotary for hours, I just leveled it with some sandpaper. I already took paint thickness readings. I have confidence there's a plenty of paint on here. And then I tackled it with the rotary. So the way the paint on the driver's side hood is right now is all the deep holograms, swirl scratches, water spots, and oxidation, they've been removed. But what's left is a hologram scratch pattern, and that's the technically correct name for it. They're not, it's not micro marring, it's not swirls. Anytime you use a rotary polisher and you leave a scratch pattern behind, that's called holograms. But the difference is, is the holograms I left behind are very shallow because of the abrasive technology I'm using and because basically the thing that's put in the holograms in is the fibers of the pads. So they're very shallow, so they're gonna buff out very fast with this. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and I've, I've already taken, because these both need to be charged, I already have uh, two batteries um, that, that came with this that I have fully charged, ready to go. And I'm gonna take and put on, this is, uh, this is my new favorite pad. This is the Edge Guard Blueberry 6 inch from uh, Buff and Shine. And it works really great on this type of tool. It centers right up on top of there. And I'm gonna be taking the Dr. Beasley's NSP150, buffing out that section. I will, I will film that live as I do it. And then after I kind of finish with this tool, I'm gonna to be unboxing the new 24 volt finisher reusing it over that system. And then at some point, I'm gonna pull this car out in the sun and do a video showing before and after, just to show the results of the tools. But mostly this is just about letting you see what comes in the box, and letting you see the tools in operation. So hang tight as I set up, move over there and get polishing. Whoops, one more thing. I just wanted to share that Flex also is coming out with an adapter. And what this is gonna enable you to do, if you've got one of the um, older legacy maroon colored polishers, you can take and put this adapter into it, and now you can use the 24 volt system. Pretty cool. I have about, I don't know, 100 flex tools here, probably 30 of them, maybe 40 of them are um, cordless. So that means I need to do a count and get a whole bunch of these things ordered in. But anyway, they will be available from flex and it allows you to uh, use all these different batteries, no matter which tool you have. So there you go, the flex. <clears throat> adapter. Let's take a look at the new 24 volt Sea Beast in action. So first thing I'm going to do, I just want to show that this is a fully charged brand new battery. I just took it off the charger so I know it's fully charged. Before we get started, I'll set that up to zero or 12 noon. Uh, and then real quickly, I went ahead and got a little ruler and I'm just going to measure this. So the backing plate that comes with it is right at five and three quarters of an inch. They call it a six inch backing plate. So usually when you make a backing plate for a tool, you make it a little undersized what you advertise because when you go to fit it on the pad, you need to be able to see how to center it up. Now, this is the Buff and Shine Blueberry, a heavy polishing pad. That with NSP150 should be pull the holograms out of here. But just real quickly, I wanted to measure this because this is sold as a six inch pad, but the diameter is actually seven inches. So seven inch pad on a six inch backing plate, all makes sense. And what's kind of nice about these edge guards is um, they have this uh, plastic cupping for centering your pad. And it looks as though they made this thing exactly for the new 24 volt CBs because that just completely centers up inside of there. 
Okay, so normally when I use this type of tool, um, I'm trying to do a heavy paint correction or li even light paint correction. But in this case, what I'm just trying to do is pull the holograms out. And as I said previously, because I'm using great abrasive technology and there's good stuff on the market and there's junk on the market. So, you know, pick your poison. Uh, but the hologram swirls that are left behind are very shallow. So this shouldn't be too hard. Um, let me go ahead and set the clock up to midnight and um, we will actually it's coming up to midnight right now. Okay. So let me go ahead and put some product on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on and I know watching people buff out um, car paint it can be like watching grass grow or water boil. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead. I've got to do everything from this center body line all the way out and actually the tops of the fenders. Um, I'm going to buff the whole thing and try not to ever, ever turn the polisher off. And we'll just see how long we get out of the five amp battery. Okay. Okay, starting to warm that pad up, get the product set up, spread out a little bit. So first thing, I'm just going to spread my product out. And my shoulders are about 24 inches wide, and this is about a two foot by two foot section area. Kind of textbook example of what almost anybody that's ever made a polish, a product, or a tool says, work a two foot by two foot area. And one of the things that's cool about a gear driven orbital is you've got the power to work such a big area. Okay, so it's on the four setting, I'm gonna spread now, I'm gonna bump this up to the six, I might not talk a whole lot because I'm gonna get buffing. Very smooth. So that, that was one section pass. I'm gonna count these out. I'm just gonna do a standard textbook eight section passes. That's two. Three. Six. So there's eight textbook examples of a cross hatch section pass. Uh, going side to side, front to back. And just for fun, let me check. I'm down on, I've used up one bar. Okay, and you can see the single stage paint coming off on here. Okay, some more product. NSP 150, tackle the next section. Uh, I don't think I can tackle this whole section here, so I'll just divide it into two places. And uh, kind of like I showed with the rotary, the best way to use these tools, you know, any battery operator tool, they tend to have the batteries at the end of the tool, but you want to turn the, pull the power up to the selected speed, lock the speed lock button, and then move your hand from here back to here. And you'll just find not only does it support the weight of the tool and give it a more balanced feel, but also gives you leverage over the tool because if, if you're holding it like this, the tool, if it starts to grab, the pads starts to grab, it kind of walk you around. But when you put your hand all the way to the back and all the way to the front, now you've got a lot more leverage over the tool. So it's easier to control. One. Two. Three. Four. Five.
set. Seven. There is eight solid section passes. Uh, one of the things you should always do is clean your pad often. Uh, for these NSP primers, what I like is a standard tire brush and then just kind of drag it over the face of it. And this will remove the two things that build up on the face of your pad, spent product and removed paint. So, and that way, when I go to work on this fresh paint, nothing's getting polluted or diluted. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. There's eight. Just for fun, let's check the battery power. We still got three bars. Okay, so I've done the center section of the hood. Now it's time to come down and get the side of the hood. Okay, we'll start up here. One. Seven, there's eight, nine, there's eight, I forgot, <laughs> that's why I count them out loud, there's one, this little section's a little trickier, but not bad, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, and here's eight. Last section here. And just real quickly, one of the benefits to a gear-driven orbital is as this panel gets thinner and thinner, I can't really keep the pad, 7-inch pad, flat without hitting this uh, pinstripe or it buffing on the bo uh, raised body line or the edge. And it's just a good practice not to do those kinds of things. So the benefit to a gear-driven, if you're using a free spinning and you go up on edge, the pad's just going to stall out. With a tool like this, watch how I hold it. You get a good firm grip. I can come in here and put this thing on edge and buff out any shaped panel instead of having to switch over to a different tool that has a different pad size just so I can maintain pad rotation. Six. Seven. Eight. Um, so I did one, two, three, four, five, six different sections. It is about nine minutes after quick battery test. I still got two bars ready to go. And what's something I want to point out about a tool like this? Um, 
because there's two actions. There's the rotating action and the oscillating action. That's actually a lot for a cordless tool or the batteries to maintain good pad rotation and oscillation. Um, so it's gonna wear down the battery faster. I mean, it, this, this same battery in the rotary will go a lot longer. And also for the finisher, it's the beast, the gear-driven orbital that's really gonna be your battery hog. So just keep that in mind and um, purchase, you know, it comes with two batteries. As long as you're very meticulous about, as soon as this battery's dead, putting in the charger, switching to the fresh battery, you should be able to keep that process going and always be buffing without ever being without a charge. If you're in doubt, just buy a second or a third battery. Okay, so yesterday when I was compounding this, I actually did the whole top of the fender. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this out. We'll see how long the battery lasts. Uh, I think I'm at two bars, so we'll just see. We'll just go till it stops. Okay. Seven, eight, nine, ten. So if you notice, I just ran the polisher back and forth on this linear or this thin panel. And whenever you're buffing out a car, if you have a big flat space, of course do a crosshatch pattern. But if the panel is thin, that panel's talking to you and it's saying, just run the polisher, the direction, the length of the panel. And if you can, try to get a couple overlap passes in there for UMR or uniform material removal for a uniform appearance. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, then I got this last section at the top of the fender here. And the other thing is, is when I switch over to do linear passes, if this helps anybody, Instead of you know doing a textbook example of eight section passes, I usually run it up to 10 or 12. It just depends on how bad the pain is, how easy it's correcting. Okay, so I did the top of the fender. Now there's a plane that you guys can't see that kind of planes down on this side. So I'm gonna come back and get that. I got one bar. So we'll just see if we can knock out the rest of the top of this fender. Then we'll take a look at the time. And then I can move on to the next step. I actually gotta finish this car. <laughs>
Last section. Still got one bar left here. Okay. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Okay, so I have completely repolished everything that I cut with the wool pad on a rotary. I still got a bar left here. Okay, so um, off camera, because it's just a little sloppier to get up here. So I've already, I see I've got this taped off so I don't get splattered down on the fresh air grill, but I still need to come up here and polish this area, this little thin strip of paint here. Um, I usually start working on the panel adjacent to me to get the edges so they're just taken care of. And um, I also had to get this up here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep on running until this battery dies. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and there's a nice gentle uh, plane that kind of waterfalls off the front of this uh, that I, I, I will pad compound it, but I haven't polished it this yet. here and get these little areas here and what do we got here still got one bar hanging in there okay this is a, another good place to use the finger painting technique so put the product that you want to use just put it like use this as a board a, an artist a canvas and then paint where you want the abrasive technology and I never waste products, so I'll just put that on the pad. And then I'm just gonna come down here. I'm actually gonna go up on edge to knock out these thin panels. Whoops. Not my car. That's two. This little section right in here. I gotta come up here and just get this little section right there.
Okay, so the entire top of the hood, tops of the fenders have been done. We are on <laughs> the blinking lights. That's usually a sign it's dead. I'm gonna go ahead, and, I know it's a bad idea to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just, I gotta knock out these little, like this A pillar here. And if this battery will just go a few minutes longer. As you can see up there, I, I was showing you the benefit of being able to go up on edge and maintain pad rotation with the gear driven orbital. Is that it? Let's give it one try. One more. That's it. <laughs> okay, so let's see what the time says over here. And we are at a solid 20, actually going on 21 minutes. Um, so 21 minutes runtime on the new 24 volt Sea Beast. And that was with the heavy uh, polishing pad, heavy cut polishing pad. And of course, if you were watching me, you could see I was pushing on that. That wasn't just the weight of the tool because I need to get it in there and, and make sure those holograms out before I go to the next step, which is using the finisher. Um, it probably looks awesome right now, but uh, I need to show the finisher for a video. And this is a show car, so I am doing what's called show car detailing. So we're gonna amp up the gloss and the clarity just by going to a free spinning random orbital polisher. And yeah, that looks really good. Okay, so hang tight. I'll come back, take a quick video showing you what this looks like with a stroll finder light. I'm gonna ramp up to switch over to the finisher. If you're watching this video before SEMA, keep in mind, I'll be at the flex booth at SEMA this year out in Las Vegas. That starts uh, November 5th. I'll be there. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Uh, we will have all the new Flex 24 volt tools there. So come on by and uh, say hi and uh, play with the tools. Uh, we got some freshly painted paint panels ready to go for sanding and polishing. Uh, so you can really test these tools out to their maximum potential. Okay, looking Okay, let me grab the camera, come down here. I just want to get some pictures, uh, before and after pictures for my blog article, a full in-depth article, and also shoot a video for the uh, before and after video. Okay. Tracking right along, uh, just a real quick video just to show you the after results. Well, I always like to start with the before. I like to show the ugly first. This is ugly. And you can see I, I don't need a scroll finder light, but let's just go ahead and throw it on there. This thing's really hacked up bad. Okay, now let's come over to this side. There's, look how nice this is coming out. There's no swirl finder light. Well, let's go ahead and throw the swirl finder light on there. Okay, so two steps, heavy cut with a wool pad on a rotary, and then come back and hit, um, hit it with the flex with the blueberry pad from Buff and Shine, and um, the NSP 150 as my polish, because those were some uh, really hacked up paint there, but it's coming out good. And so next I'm gonna just gear up, just so you know, I'm gonna gear up to show the new Flex finisher. And I'm gonna repolish this same section. And then it's probably too late to pull this thing outside today and get full overhead sun to show the before and after. But I will do that first thing tomorrow uh, around 11 o'clock. I think that's when the sun comes out. And that, that video will be on the Dr. Beasley's YouTube channel and also uh, embedded into my article on the Dr. Beasley's blog. Here are the before and after results after torture testing all three of the new 24 volt flex cordless polishers. So this is a 1970 Pontiac Grand Prix special edition uh, SJ model. And here are the after results. So you can see all the holograms, 100% absolutely removed. So here are the results after using the three new 24 volt flex polishers. So this is a 1970 Pontiac Grand Am SJ edition. And you can see the way it arrived completely filled full of holograms throughout the entire finish. And then this is the side I use the flex polishers on. Dramatic before and after difference.